Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of Finboot's interview series. My name is Juan. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Finboot, and I will be your host today. Today marks the first episode of our new series, where we will be discussing uh, with industry thought leaders the challenges and the initiatives related to sustainability, decarbonization, and the energy transition, with a special focus on circular economy. This time I have the, the privilege and the pleasure to host uh, Ron Abbott. Ron is a leader in advanced recycling technologies with over 30 years of experience in the industry. He currently serves as the Vice President of Chemical Recycling at VOPAC. VOPAC is uh, an independent infrastructure provider with over 78 terminals in 23 countries, which works uh, extensively in the storage of everyday life products like energy, chemicals, and food ingredients. Ron, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Any, any opening thoughts today? Well, first of all, great to be here. I love talking about this space because there's so much changing so quickly. The, there's a lot of societal need for circularity and for recycling. And so I think it's it's an exciting time to be uh, engaged in uh, new technology development and looking forward to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. And yeah, uh, I'm certain it's going to be a, an interesting chat today. So before before we get started with the interview, I do have to take the opportunity to do a little bit of a, of a self-promotional on us and share a bit of what we do at, at Finboot. Um, Finboot is a technology company that enables digital traceability for industrial uh, supply chains, right? Helping gather and share supply chain and product data in a secure, reliable, and trustworthy way. We help our clients uh, substantiate their ESG and sustainability credentials which then leads to a stronger market position. Um, we're already working with global industry leaders uh, with a particular focus in energy, chemicals, and steel. With that, let us get started to the, the juicy part of the conversation today, our interview with Ron. Uh, Ron, I already spoiled a little bit of, of this about you, but if, if you could tell us a bit about you, your background, about BOPAC, and uh, your role within the organization. Sure, happy to. Yeah, um, I, I grew up in New England in Northeast United States, um, always interested in science and application of science. Um, ended up uh, earning a PhD in chemistry at Texas A&M University. And while there I met uh, who turned out to be uh, my wife of 35 years to date, Andrea. We have two sons and, and two daughters-in-law, and now we have a three-year-old granddaughter and more on the way. So very excited about what's happening uh, on the personal front. On a professional level, I've worked for Philips Petroleum, uh, then with Chevron Chemical, and then merged to perform CP Chem. So as you noted earlier, 31 years experience in that space, in the manufacturing space, uh, primarily in R&D and in uh, new technology development, really with a focus on application. Uh, uh, the past five years have been involved in chemical recycling of plastics, uh, realizing that really the industry needs to have a complementary approach to mechanical recycling. And so that's where this came in. CB Chem uh, commercialized a product called Marlex Anu and very excited about how uh, CB Chem and others are growing in this space quickly. Um, in June of 2023, I was offered an opportunity to join VOPAC, and I accepted it in the new energy space to become vice president of chemical recycling, mainly because I saw an opportunity to help accelerate the space. So I'm excited about where VOPAC is heading and how we can become uh, a player in terms of helping uh, pyrolysis oil companies and helping resin producers scale up their technologies and build efficiencies because we all need that in order to get to the, to the end goal of having a circular economy. Definitely, definitely. And I think, look, what you pointed out is, is key, right? There are some, some limitations in, chem in mechanical recycling, sorry, where basically the, the amount of product that we require for our industries, is, it's, it's a... It's a supply issue, right? So I think advanced uh, technologies like chemical recycling have been more and more out there and, and have now uh, grown to, to a level where you can see the benefit and you can see them at work. And you can also see the way some organizations are essentially collecting that supply chain data, maintaining the transparency to make sure that, that it is a true, um, and a true, let's say, step forward in terms of, of sustainability. 
Now let's um, let's have a look a little bit at uh, kind of some more fairly recent events. In December of 2023, uh, during COP28, uh, we basically marked a historical global agreement, a commitment from from nations across the world to say we're going to move away from uh, from fossils. And starting the year in 2024, we saw a similar message coming out of the World Economic Forum in Davos. How does uh, VOPAC perceive? Uh, the business impact, particularly, of transitioning towards that uh, net zero emissions uh, economy? Yeah, it's an interesting question because Volpac is a 400-year-old company. And so Volpac has to reinvent themselves from time to time in order to have this kind of longevity. So Volpac sees uh, the, the, new, uh, the new mandates coming in, the emissions uh, reduction opportunities as opportunities themselves. We we see that the world is going to change. Uh, we will not be using fossil fuels forever. We're going to have to be moving into uh, lower emission, lower carbon opportunities. And so really, this is what VOPAC is looking at. This is why we have a new energies division, which is the division I work in. Uh, just to give an example of what we've done of, of in recent time, we've uh, been repurposing some of the tanks which have historically stored conventional oils and fuels, and we're moving them into biorenewables. So we announced 22 tanks in Los Angeles being converted to biorenewable storage for SAF and renewable diesel. Uh, we've done something quite similar in Rotterdam with 16 new storage tanks, and those will be used for SAF and renewable diesel as well. Um, and there's some uh, biomethanol bunkering uh, activities that are now taking place in Singapore. So just an indication of how the world is changing. And we see the same yeah. thing happening in the feedstock space. There will be renewable feedstocks that are going to be part of our portfolios for, for uh, major petrochemical producers. It's already happening. And that's where the future takes us. So, yeah, VOPAC is quite committed to, uh, to a net zero emissions economy and sees this as being a challenge, but also an opportunity. Yeah. No, that's good. And, and clearly, an organization that's been around for 400 years has seen more than one cycle of change, right? So, so certainly you guys have uh, the experience to kind of face this new this new transition, right? I guess in the same line of questions, and you you've already mentioned a couple of kind of, of initiatives that you have uh, on renewable diesel, uh, SAF, uh, feedstock. Again, what are some of these uh, essentially flagship initiatives that that you're carrying uh, forward in Vopac? Uh, what are some of the key targets of the organization? Again, we know that storage and distribution channels will be critical for producers and consumers. Uh, so what, what is Volpac's role in that picture? And, and what are, again, some of those flagship initiatives that are, uh, that are your focus in a, in, in a way? Yeah, yeah. The <clears throat> Volpac really has a strategy which can be easily summarized as grow, uh, as improve, grow, and accelerate. The first pillar is improve our financial and sustainability performance. The second is to grow in our base industrial and gas terminals, which is uh, which is really important right now as we as we uh, see the world shifting more towards LNGs and whatnot as an interim fuel before we get to net zero. And then the third is to accelerate towards new energies and sustainable feedstocks. And so uh, at this point, um, sustainability was mentioned 287 times in our annual report that, that just came out last month. So you can see the VOPAC is very, very interested in this space. And we're interested in taking these uh, these three pillars and uh, using this as our, as our lens to look through as we grow. So uh, for example, in the growth space, we've, been, we've announced 1 billion euros in assets, in, uh, in, uh, in growth and in investment to get to the end goal by 2030. And we also have committed to invest 1 billion euros to accelerate towards new energies and sustainable feedstocks by 2030 as well. So two very significant investment commitments we've made to indicate just how aggressive VOPAC plans to be in this space. That's that's really good to hear. And again, it's always positive to see again how, how huge industry players are again, demonstrating their commitment with actions, backing that up with their progress. And, and execution of those of those initiatives, right? But again, it's not it's not all easy, right? So I know that not only for Vopac but for the industry as a whole, uh, there are challenges, right? So if we, if you can tell us a little bit more, again, given your your experience, what are some of those major challenges 
that not only you see at Bopak, but that the industry as a whole is um, is facing in respect to, to sustainability and circular economy initiatives. Yeah, there are plenty of challenges out there. You know, we have societal needs, uh, societal needs for fuels, for transportation, uh, for packaging, for our economy, all these kind of needs we have for modern society. Uh, and we've been quite successful in scaling the fossil-based and uh, feedstocks and fossil-based fuels to get us where we are today. It's quite efficient. It's uh, it's uh, it's quite mature. Lots of infrastructure. But as we get into the new economy, into the lower carbon economy, this is going to have to uh, this is going to mandate uh, uh, growth in the infrastructure for that. And so it doesn't happen overnight. I think uh, societal pressures being as they are, people are uh, anxious to see this transition take place very, very quickly. And people are going as fast as they can, but we are gonna have to take some time to get us from the fossil-based economy to the circular-based economy. So that's one of the big challenges is setting expectations and making sure that we go at a pace that's aggressive and a pace that is uh, is realistic at the same time. Um, so we, we, we can't go so fast that we we undermine uh, some people in society that may be less privileged to, to uh, have prices increase too, too rapidly, for example. On the yeah. other hand, there's a sense of urgency. Uh, we, have a, we have a climate risk issue we've got to work on. We've got to fix this as soon as we possibly can. So yeah, right-sizing the pace of change is yeah. really the big challenges I see. Definitely, definitely. And that, that again, very much on point because uh, as you say, we know we know there's a deadline, right? The, the kind of the environment is giving us a deadline, but also it's unfair uh, that in the developed world we we accelerate very quickly to a transition uh, when we benefited from again those uh, advances in fossil fuel technologies for economic growth. And there's already a large part of the population that kind of needs to to to, to still uh, reach that level of uh, of growth themselves, right? So I think, as you say, fine tuning that pace, finding ways in which the energy transition and sustainability initiatives are actually levers for growth in these underdeveloped uh, regions is, is going to be, well, part of what we're going to be seeing developing over the next uh, few few years, right? So uh, exactly. thank you for for those comments. I think it's clear, again, that Wolfpack uh, very much sits at the forefront of innovation in, in this industry and that, again, you, you guys have uh, several initiatives uh, when it comes to uh, decarbonization and and that they are as well quite uh, ambitious, right? So so on one side, congratulations for that. Now that being said, to reach uh, these global targets of net zero industry, right? So we do need mainstream adoption. And again, BOPAC is a is a huge organization. You mentioned some of the uh, multi billion dollar investments that you guys are doing, but to reach that mainstream adoption, we need kind of stronger triggers, right? So how do you see uh, on one side, the role of regulatory frameworks, but on the other, financing mechanisms uh, in terms of supporting that energy transition, right? Will these regulatory and financing mechanisms, they will be the triggers for mainstream adoption, or do we think something else will become the, the driver for that? Yeah, it's interesting. The more I look at this, the more I look at uh, the the way the uh, next generation economies are developing, uh, it's, it's becoming more and more clear to me that uh, Really, technology development is driving supply. Regulatory development uh, ultimately dictates demand. So we're going to need to work in tandem. Companies have to continue to develop technologies that are uh, circular in nature, technologies that are capable of taking biorenewables or capable of, of taking uh, waste materials and repurposing them uh, to provide the circular feedstocks, which we all need for the products which we use every day, whether it's a fuel, a plastic, whatever the case may be. On the demand side, uh, these are going to be more costly. And so as a result of that, we really do need sound regulatory frameworks, which help to define uh, what the demand environment is going to look like, because uh, there's always going to be a reluctance to pay more for something. Uh, and so there has to be a level playing field for everybody. And that's what I think that's what uh, uh, folks struggle with to a degree, and understandably so, because it's a very complex environment. But that's what I see as being one of the big, biggest uh, issues there, which 
which uh, with time will be resolved. I think it, everyone has the same vision in mind directionally. We all want to have a better future for our children and grandchildren. Uh, we all want to have uh, answers to some of the societal dilemmas we have. And so, um, so yeah, we're going to need uh, to work as a, as a team sport with our regulators, with our NGOs, with our industrial partners, and with society as a whole, our academians, to make sure that we develop technologies and have a supply position that's balanced enough to make the economy work, because everyone has to be cash positive across the value chain. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That, that, that's, uh, that's a key point. Uh, certainly, again, we, we need to be realistic, right? If we expect energy companies to invest in transforming to a more low carbon and sustainable supply, we need to make sure that there's going to be a demand for those products, right? And that the, the decisions at the consumption level are going to be the right ones as well, right? Yeah, now, exactly. You you touched a little bit already on this, on technology, which is kind of the next part that I want us to, to move to. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Volpac's uh, future plans when it comes to integrating innovative technologies into, into your operations too? enhance that environmental performance, your resource efficiency, and your supply chain uh, transparency. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the best place to start there is our Volpac Ventures Group. Uh, Volpac has an interesting uh, ventures activity, which uh, helps us to understand the next generation technologies coming down the pike. And so uh, Volpac Ventures has invested in a number of different technologies really to learn. Uh, we've been invested in a company called Hydrogenius, which is a liquid organic hydrogen carrier uh, based company. And that's helping us to move hydrogen because hydrogen is one of the uh, one of the focal points of our new energy strategy. Uh, we have invested in Zycle, which is a chemical recycling company. We're looking at that opportunity to understand the pyrolysis space better. Uh, we've and so uh, we've invested in drones uh, that are uh, used for inspection of tanks, things like that. So all that to say, uh, Volpac Ventures has done a lot of uh, interesting things to help Volpac accelerate our internal understanding of uh, even things as simple as water treatment or uh, carbon dioxide technologies. Uh, one of my favorites is Infinity Recycling, which is an investment which we have made with Infinity which is funding uh, the startups of, uh, of uh, high potential pyrolysis companies uh, in the hopes that we end up accelerating the circularity space. And so hopefully we end up with, uh, with uh, attractive returns coupled with uh, faster deployment of these technologies. So we end up with more material going into commerce at an attractive price. So uh, again, that, that's, that's really what I see as being really exciting is uh, having a futuristic viewpoint and spending sufficient time and resources looking at what's coming so that we can be prepared for the future. Definitely. And I, I think that the strategy that I, that I think I've seen in other energy companies more and more, that creation of a you know, dedicated ventures arm to, to select kind of some of those right and, and more promising emerging technologies that, that can become, again, a, a huge differentiator for them in the future and for their own um, sustainability and ESG um, initiatives. Now, again, from Finwood being backed by two uh, large corporate venture capitals already, we, we kind of know uh, what that represents and, and, and how it's certainly for both us as a technology company and for our investors, a mutual uh, gain opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> Uh, if I may move again from technology to get a bit more specific and then have you talk a little bit about uh, digital technologies, right? Again, for us at Finwood, it's always interesting to understand how industry leaders view digital technologies and especially how those digital technologies can be leveraged for sustainability. Is digitalization playing a role in some of these initiatives at, at VOPAC? And, and if so, how, how does that look? Yeah, digitization is a really important part of the future. As in fact, it's, it's a big, a big part of the the present. To be honest with you, uh, Volpac Ventures, going back to that story, uh, one of the investments they made was in a company called Nextport. Nextport is software which helps to create transparency between different businesses, different parties, and it's really about uh, planning uh, and executing uh, ship arrivals at ports loadings and then departures. 
And really, the beauty of this technology, the beauty of this of this uh, this software, is that it helps all the different parties that don't typically communicate all that well helps them to align. And so you minimize uh, ship idle time. You you uh, you communicate uh, ingress and departure. You uh, you minimize uh, demerge costs, things like that. So it builds a lot of efficiencies into the system. So it's a, just an example of what Volpac is doing, uh, very practical, but at the same time, incredibly valuable to, uh, to reduce uh, CO2 emissions, wait times, and to help all the parties involved with these, uh, these large uh, movements of material to be as efficient as they possibly can be, both in terms of cost and energy. Absolutely, I think the cross, cross organizational uh, data sharing in, in these complex industrial supply chains is it's becoming more and more of a requirement, right, across different business areas, and and again, that's one of the kind of areas where where FinBoot tries to add value to, right? So, Ron, unfortunately for me at least, we are coming to the end of of the interview. Uh, I I sure hope our viewers feel the the same. Uh, could you give us some uh, final thoughts or or closing arguments, please? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll just start by saying that Volpac has always been a global business, and that's not going to change. But it gives us an interesting perspective with uh, with terminals around the world in 23 countries. You're balancing uh, opportunity, infrastructure, culture, language, all these things. So um, it, when we talk about a team sport and circularity, it's really interesting to work in this kind of an environment uh, because you see everything around the world, all kinds of different challenges and opportunities. Um, really what I'm excited about is that Volpac is moving in, in these directions, trying to improve the efficiencies of circularity because we all absolutely need this. Uh, and my hope is that in 20 years, when my, my uh, three-year-old granddaughter is now entering the workforce, that she sees a totally different world that we see today, that we can look back and we can say we were quite successful in uh, reducing carbon footprints, we were quite successful in building efficiencies and that the world in 20 years is much, much better than the world is today. So it's really, that's, that's my hope. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an optimist by nature. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping to see as we go forward. And I think uh, what you've touched on uh, in terms of circularity, uh, digital uh, opportunities, uh, and just futuristic thoughts, those are what we all need to be thinking about as we get closer and closer to, uh, to the next generation needs that our society is going to have. To, to be uh, to be environmentally responsible and to all share a planet with the population increasing. So yeah, we have a, we have a lot of challenges, but we have a lot of opportunities. And these tools, like digitization, are going to co- go a long way in helping us get to that end point that we need. Great. Now, thank you, Ron. Wise words, and I will make a note in my calendar in 20 years' time. I'll be interviewing your uh, your granddaughter as she comes into the workforce, right? So we'll we'll see uh, all of, all of the uh, let's say accomplishments that we'll have by then. That's my um, hope. <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, let me thank the viewers for watching. Uh, remind everyone that if you would like to learn more about what we do at Finwood and our work in digital traceability, you can find out more in our website finwood.com. You can go to our social media channels on LinkedIn and Twitter slash x and and of course you can also um reach out to me or anyone in the team and we'd be happy to share a final note this is the first of our circular economy interview series so make sure to stay tuned for the next episodes where top leaders just like ron will be sharing their insights ron once more thank you and thanks everyone for watching thanks juan take care